Hey, 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 hey. Uh, <laughs> I mean, who knows how much longer databases are going to be a thing anyway. Uh, I, I, I wanted to talk. Uh, so I, I've done some, um, I don't know, blog post videos. One of one, of, at least one of those things about how uh, over indexing uh, can cause issues with the buffer pool, with uh, locking. I mean, goes to say it with with blocking as well. And uh, I wanted to go another step in that sort of same direction and look at how uh, over indexing can impact the transaction log, which isn't something that I normally care about all that much because uh, I don't know I, I haven't taken a transaction log backup since 2014 or so so I'm not really sweating it but uh, <laughs> for people with uh, you know the, the kind of workloads that depend on throughput of transactions uh, it's the kind of thing that you might care about Some, something that you might be interested in so I put together uh, this demo here to uh, show you uh, I don't know this a, a few different things one is how uh, lock granularity can uh, can impact the number of locks taken which kind of goes without saying but I wanted to uh, show it show show you how it gets um, how that gets uh, uh, translated into the transaction log and also how additional indexes thrown into the mix can also uh, impact that. So what I'm going to do is make sure that all my, any, any unnecessary indexes are currently dropped. I'm going to run a checkpoint. My database is in simple recovery, and this will be the same whether you're in simple or full recovery. There's a big, 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 big misconception that if you have your database in simple recovery model that somehow less is logged. While that's true for some bulk operations, like uh, minimally logged inserts, some uh, some index rebuilds. It's not true for regular user transactions. Regular user stuff still has to get fully logged in order to be rolled back or forward. The only difference is that SQL Server manages the transaction log for you when things get flushed out. Tracking transaction log backups doesn't, I mean, you can't even do it, but it wouldn't make a difference here. It wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have any impact. But the stuff that happens still has to get fully logged in there. So stop being goofy <laughs> about that. So this is going to run a checkpoint to make sure there's nothing uh, currently in the transaction log. Uh, open a transaction um, update. Uh, this table that I have in my copy of the Stack Overflow database called Total Score by User. Uh, and then after the update runs, which is going to hit exactly 10,000 rows, uh, I'm going to look at the transaction log. We're going to take a, a full view of all the stuff that happened in there, and then we're just going to get a summary of the locking information that get, went in the transaction log. So I'm going to show you a few different things with lock granularity, and then a few, a couple different. Uh, well, I guess what happens when we when we start adding indexes, how those also get logged. So let's run this, I and mean, then that runs pretty quickly, and we can see. Ooh, goodness me! Excuse me. Don't know where that came from. I apologize. I, that was that was rather gross. Um, so what we'll see is for every row that ends up in here, all right, we can see all these different things happening. Uh, we can see all these different locks getting taken. Uh, we get a uh, three locks uh, for each row doodaddy thing, and uh, that's fun, right? That's interesting. And then if we switch this to be a page lock hint what happens. Uh, that goes down to two, and we get sort of a, a, a more round number of locks. And if we switch this over to be a table lock, uh, we still get 10,000 records. So notice that there were 10,000 records, whether we took a row, page, or uh, or uh, object lock. Right? Every single one gave 10,000 records here, but the number of locks that get that shows up here will change with each one, right? Because we took a, like, like a lot more uh, individual locks for row or page level versus the object level, right? Cool, perfect. So uh, to keep things a little bit more simple, I'm going to leave the tab lock hint in place here, and then I'm going to add a couple indexes to the table. All right, I'm add these. Do, do, do. All right, those are on there, and now I'm going to rerun this. And it took a little bit longer, <laughs> and we have uh, a little bit more information in here. So now we're going to see um, each of our indexes ended up 
in here, right? And we can see the number of locks that got taken on each of them. We can see the primary key was also logged in here. And we can see the uh, number of locks and the number of records. Now, if I switch this to be row lock or something, right, we, we would see more in there because you would be taking more individual locks. Well, this runs and this goes, and now we have slightly higher numbers in here. So that's fun, I guess. Anyway, uh, a lot of people don't realize um, how much uh, locking stuff gets stuck in the transaction log. And beyond that, a lot of people also don't realize that all the changes to indexes that uh, also get logged in there. Each individual index is, you know, I, I know I've said this before, a separate structure on disk and memory. You have to back it up, check it for corruption, all that stuff. Like everything you have to, like every different index is something that you have to uh, account for. So if you have very, very busy tables with uh, trend, uh, with like you know modifications to data. I mean, I know no one deletes data. I've I've seen your tables. No one has ever deleted data from them. Everything is inserted in and then maybe updated at some other point. But if you have very busy tables, very busy transactional tables, uh, the more indexes you have on them, the more you are logging as data goes into those tables and gets modified. Now, uh, this is uh, something that you know. Um, also uh, tends to harm people who design very wide tables, who don't do a good job of normalizing tables, because uh, you have tables within tables, and all of those tables that people want to, uh, uh, all those uh, different like groups of columns that people tend to want to um, to pull data from in sort of their own little chunks. Uh, you know, the, you'll have wha lots of wacky missing index requests. You'll end up with, um, you know, lots and lots more indexes because there are lots of different lots more different ways lots of different columns to filter the table to you know select from the table so it just kind of uh exacerbates the issue anyway i think that was it i i ran out of things to say so i'm gonna i'm gonna turn this thing off thank you for watching